It's fascinating how you even came up with the idea. How did you come up with the idea in the first place? Was it just looking at insects and how they see the world? Yeah, well, I mean, I admittedly can't take a lot of credit for the idea. It's uh, inspired very directly by the research field that I'm in. I work uh, under a, a group called, um, oh, blimey, this is a terrible bit. I can't remember the name. No, <laughs> uh, called Brains on Board, uh, which does a lot of this stuff in general. Uh, but even going further than back, I think I actually first got the idea when I was writing my literacy review, uh, which was sort of covering a lot of the embedded recreations of insect eyes and pretty much all of them as you saw some of those old timey looking research photos use some kind of lens to uh, reflect the world out the the real difficulty was doing it on the cheap i found ah yes <laughs> <laughs> um how do you differentiate between what's ahead of you or behind you or is it just a case of knowing that left is front and right is back yeah, it's pretty much just a case of knowing the angles at which everything aligns. Uh, you might have seen on the recording I did of the software, not only can you place that reticule, but you can also rotate it so that right. the edges change. Uh, I like to try to rotate it so the forward is in the middle, but actually I find it's better to rotate it so that it sort of overlaps one of the supporting ball bearing holders. Um, Phil Hall has asked, how did you do a di I don't know which diagram you means, but you did a there was a diagram in it and he wondered how you did it. Oh, okay. So the, it was a bit of a, a multifaceted uh, approach to the entire thing, really. Uh, I, I've never sort of done videos of, of this long form. I, I'm used to just sort of putting up slides and, and ad libbing. Um, but actually, most of the diagrams were done either in Google Slides and then just transitioning and recording. Oh, right. uh, or flash for anything that sort of looks cartoony uh, and the picture of the actual robot itself. Right. Uh, and then finally, I edited it together in After Effects to actually make things transition properly. Cool. Um, did you ever find a more reflective half sphere than a ball bearing? Oh, blimey, that is a question and a half. As, as my girlfriend will attest, I spent months going between places trying to find things that were better, uh, particularly because the, the first iteration of this idea was designed for combat robotics, where weight is really at a premium. So I was looking for really lightweight things. I went through, uh, like, I think, were they egg strainers or something? They, I spent a lot of time in uh, kitchen stores trying to find, like, tiny little balls or, or spoons and things. I think spoons would actually work better because really you don't want a half sphere, you want a sort of oblique spheroid sort of thing going on. Um, but the ball bearing was the only thing that really had the good reflective qualities. Everything else is a little too dimpled or uh, dented. Uh, I have got a couple of like uh, Christmas ball bearings from, uh, not ball bearings, uh, Christmas ornaments, little baubles that, that are also two, 20 millimeters, mm. uh, which I will be using combat robotics, but they're slightly warped, so yeah. Uh, Mark Mellers was saying that there's no encoder feedback to give a best guess for the new location. Yeah, so right. as it stands, there isn't uh, in, in this particular setup. Uh, but I mentioned briefly, we do actually have encoders on the robot. I know Chris has put a lot of effort into making sure that those encoders are pretty accurate. Uh, and we're hoping to actually incorporate that because obviously at the moment it's a bit iffy uh, actually getting it to detect things um, but what I can do is uh, as as I mentioned I'm actually using a bitmap image which sort of will represent the probability field of where the robot's going to be so I can bias that to where the robot might be using the encoders which is something that I'm really quite anxious to uh, to get a, get a try yeah. on but unfortunately no physical robot at the moment no. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's in Sheffield which is like you know, 20 miles away from here I think oh, right. <laughs> Um, what kind of update rate do you get your mapping to run at? Ah, uh, yeah. So this, this, I assume this will actually be fairly related to uh, David's question about the frame rate rates as well on, on the Pi. Um, so actually, I can't give a very good answer for that at the moment because, uh, as I've already mentioned, the actual physical robot was sort of separated from me uh, as. Um, COVID happened. So I don't have a lot of experience running this on the Pi. I know that we can get it to run reasonably fast, sort of fast enough to start calling it real time. 
but there are a lot of features that can be changed and parameters that can be tuned. For instance, the, uh, the stepping distance in our convolution kernel, we can cut down a lot uh, as it starts to go slowly. And also the actual resolution of the camera. For most of those videos, I was using a fairly high resolution image, um, but you can get away with a lot lower resolution and still perform perfectly well. Yeah, as long as it sort of just gives you the rough, rough direction to go and it gets better as it gets closer, presumably. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, the biggest issue is like detecting barrels at a distance uh, because then the resolution really becomes an issue. But apart from that, it's it's sort of fairly OK. Yeah. Dave has asked, did you try a reflective cone rather than a sphere? Oh, I tried. I really tried to find something like that, but uh, I couldn't find any anywhere that were uh, decent enough. I was trying to 3D print a little cone and then wrap some reflective uh, like wall mirror that you can get this stuff that would stick onto the wall. But it was a lot of effort, uh, especially to make it smooth enough uh, so that yeah. it wasn't messing up the angle measurements. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Mark noticed that you're uh, an autonomous combat bot person. Yes. Yeah. What, that's what, uh, what weight class are you in? <laughs> yeah. So uh, I do a lot of uh, stuff with the Sheffield uh, Roboteer Society. Uh, we're mostly an ant weight uh, class society, although I think we're, we're planning on building a, a beetle weight at the moment. Uh, admittedly, my autonomous end of things is uh, kind of limited because I have a lot of these systems, but they're a little bit outside of the weight class for ant weight. So uh, I'm just sort of putting it together uh, as and when. Uh, we have a couple of rule sets that we're also narrowing down for combat. Cool. I think that might be the last question we've got. Oh, um, somebody else asked about frame per second, but you're not too sure. Yeah, yeah, again, it's sort of mostly just how much you can uh, you can kick it in. There, there were some interesting uh, optimizations that were done. So I think actually somebody might have mentioned lookup tables versus performing the D-warp, yeah. Um, so I actually bake it all to a lookup table uh, so that it's a lot faster. Um, but as as opposed to the presentation where I say you go pixel by pixel looking it up, I actually found that in order to gain back a couple of clock cycles, you could uh, just take that dwarp lookup table as a big vector in NumPy uh, and then do a um, a map, you know, a, a mask. So you know, place that as the uh, the input ID to another to the actual input image and it would perform really quick actually like on the order of sort of 15 or so milliseconds which I was quite astounded by uh, it meant that the lookup table went down from like 20 mill uh, you know two seconds to to four or five seconds to 15 milliseconds cool that's, that's quite some rate <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's surprising all right, I think that's the question. So thank you so much for taking the time to do the talk. I, I know that recording talks is worse than giving li live talks. <laughs> yes, it's true. But um, so thank you very much. And thanks for asking, answering all those questions. That's been brilliant. So thank you. No problem. Thanks for having me on.